When I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do was to go to the park that was about a mile from my house. And I'd meet my friends there and we would play one of our favorite games. And this game was a very simple one. It's probably one that parents would not allow their children to play anymore. It was nice when I could go to the park without my parents so that we could play this game. But one person had a football and their mission was to simply just stay on their feet and get away from everyone else. And everyone else who didn't have the football, their job was very simple. It was just to get that person to the ground. And when the person was finally tackled to the ground, they would give up the ball and somebody else would take it and the game would begin again and we would play this for hours and hours and hours. But eventually, since we were at a park, someone else would show up. And usually it was a kid who was much bigger than the rest of us. And of course, he would want to play. And when that kid would get the ball, what would happen is we would all just basically be dangling off of that one kid, holding on to his legs, trying to pull him to the ground uh, as he was laughing and walking with the football. But in, in John chapter 18, we see that Jesus is going to be arrested. And what it says in uh, verse number four, it says, it says, So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. And everything that I've read says that a detachment of soldiers is anywhere between 600 to 1,000 men. We don't know if all of this detachment was there, but we get the feeling from this that there is this large group of men who came to arrest this one man who is the son of a carpenter who hangs out with fishermen and a tax collector. Uh, none of these people who are highly trained or skilled warriors. So you get the sense that they knew already that there was something special about Jesus. But imagine seeing this happen, where when these soldiers say who they're looking for, and all Jesus does is step forward and says that he is the one that they're looking for, that they all fall to the ground. Now these are skilled warriors, men who are trained. Um, I'm sure it's not a situation where if one fell, it was like dominoes and one fell on top of the other because of the training and the skill that they had. But what did happen is that the power of God was on display. That these men fell to the ground because of the power that was shown from Jesus. Not because of some physical action that he took, but because of the words that came out of his mouth. So my hope for you today is that you recognize that the power of God is all around you. It is in our natural world and it is on display and um, in your life as well. So my hope is that you see that today. My also hope that you recognize is that this power of God is, is loving you. That, that God sent Jesus for you to save you. And that power uh, is tremendous. But would you pray with me in this moment? Lord, we thank you so much for your power. We thank you that it was on display in that moment in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus. And Lord, we thank you so much that you sent Jesus to die in our place to save us. Lord, we ask that you would help us to see that power today, that awesome power on display. And we pray these things in your name. Amen.